Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar on how to start a profitable e-commerce business, a seven-step method. Okay, so just to note, this is a sample of our online program. Um, we are running e-commerce courses on a monthly basis and we cover all e-commerce modules. Today, I'll be covering dropshipping, which is one of the successful e-commerce uh, dropshipping models. So we'll help you go from nothing to making your first sale um, within a week. Um, you'll be able to learn more from this link and I'll share this presentation with you uh, right after our webinar ends. So stay till the end for a special discount. So let me introduce myself. My name is Alina Hassan and I'm a digital marketing executive at Astrolabs. Um, on a side note, I have a side hustle consisting of 5 million followers on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter account is Factionary and I also have over 100K, 100K, yeah, 100K or 90K on Snapchat. Um, I also have a dropshipping business. My website is called themadali.com. So let's discuss the types of e-commerce businesses. Okay, so first it's drop shipping, right? Which is what we'll be covering today. Second, we have wholesaling. Then we have subscription services, um, subscription packages, makeup packages in any niche. Um, and then we have selling uh, our services. And there's another type of um, selling services called, it's called drop, sh uh, drops, drop servicing. Um, so it's basically, uh, paying other people to create services for you and then you place those services on your website. And then you sell virtual products like maybe an e-commerce course or digital marketing course or online consulting. So today we'll cover dropshipping mainly, right? So let's discuss uh, just a moment. I'm going to admit some people who are waiting in the room. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. Okay. So what is drop shipping in simple words, right? A customer purchases an item from your store, from your URL at a retail price. Then the order is forwarded to your supplier that you will choose. Um, you pay only the wholesale price of that product. So let's say if on your store, you are placing a product for $20, but when you actually buy it from your supplier, you're only buying it for $2. And then the supplier ships the item directly to the customer under your business name. So basically you're the middleman between the supplier and the customer. The only thing that you have to worry about for your website is the branding on your, of your website and the marketing. Okay, so this is basically the drop shipping model, right? Um, a customer places um, an order, pays you retail price, $200, and then you forward the order to your supplier and maybe pay $150, and then you make a $50 profit. Um, let me see my, I have something in my chat. Okay, no problem, no problem. It's, um, it's being recorded right now. And I'll send you the um, webinar link as well for the recording, as well as the slideshow, right? So let's see. Okay, now the mistake I see in this slide is maybe uh, the person can place their product for $250 and then purchase it for $150 because then it gives him more of a profit margin because you have to keep in mind that you are going to spend on marketing. Um, if you want your drop shipping business to be successful, you have to market it and bring in the customers, right? The initial customers. Okay. Um, just a moment, guys. Okay. So what do you need for drop shipping? Like what are the basic things that you need for drop shipping? Uh, you buy a domain, 
absolutely. Without a domain, you cannot have a, a, a store. Um, for my domain, it's called the madalley.com. And uh, you buy a platform where you can host your website. So you have multiple options. I mean, you can host your website on uh, WordPress or other platforms. But for a beginner, I would recommend Shopify. Uh, they have a 90 day free tri uh, trial due to COVID-19. So you can basically run your website for three months free of charge. And all you need to do is buy a domain. And then you use their built-in themes and plugins. So they have uh, plugins for attaching your suppliers to the website. They have plugins to optimize your website and make the theme better. And they have eight free themes. So you really don't need to purchase a theme because they have fantastic customizable uh, themes on their platform. And guys, if I do break down, if my recording, if my recording breaks down, just send me a message on chat so I can exit and come back again. Because sometimes we have those internet issues, right? So what do you need for drop shipping? We have covered the theme. We have covered the theme which comes with Shopify. Basically, only you have to purchase a domain. And the last thing is that you need a plugin called Oberloo. So Oberloo is basically a plugin on Shopify exclusively, which attaches you to the supplier on AliExpress. So it's mainly for AliExpress and Shopify, and it automates the whole drop shipping process for you. So you don't have to place the orders manually when they're coming on your website. You just have to click the buy button and your customer's details will go directly to the supplier and that's it. I mean, so this really helps with the um, process for your website. You cannot manually add all of the details if the orders start coming in. And then the Shopify monthly cost after three months is $29, which I think is fantastic for a beginner. Um, and let's say if you buy a domain right now, it would cost you anywhere from $8 to $14. Okay, so the basic is that you have a Shopify trial after purchasing a domain, and then you install the Oberloo plugin on your platform, absolutely free for three months, right? And Oberloo is free for a lifetime um, until you exceed 500 products on your website. So if you're adding more than 500 products onto your catalog, then I think their plan is around $30. But for me, I never had to go through it because I have around maybe 100 products on my website. So let's, uh, let's move on to the seven step method, okay? That I have implemented for my website as well. So it's a bit different for me because I've always had an audience on Factionary of like um, 5 million people. So mostly they reside in US, Australia, Canada, UK. So I would just market the products to them. But for people, of course, if they don't have that audience, they need to implement these seven steps to really make it work in dropshipping and any other e-commerce models, by the way. Okay, so first you need a selling platform. Um, there are different kinds of platforms that you can use. Um, as I said, you can use a website called WordPress and then you can connect it to WooCommerce. Um, and it helps you with the e-commerce businesses, right? And then you have OpenCart. I've, I've, I've never tried OpenCart, but it's similar. And then you have other options. But for me, uh, for as a beginner, Shopify was super easy and Shopify has been a favorite for dropshippers in the beginning stages. And keep in mind that you can always migrate and change your website, move it to another platform, but you wouldn't need to if you start with Shopify. And if after a year you want to change, they really like, um, it's, it's an automatic process. You just have to move the hosting. Okay, so the second step is choosing a dropshipping niche, right? Um, so for me, I started with what interested me and my passions. So my store is not like a, a specific store, a niche store. My store is 80% niche. Um, I try to target uh, like uh, women and women products, beauty products, but I keep a 20% margin for general products. So you could say gadgets or um, maybe baby toys. Um, 
something that's working in the market, or uh, maybe pet products, but that's like a 20%. 80% my website is niche. Um, I sell beauty products. So find out what your interests and passions are. If, if you're interested in animals, maybe you would like to sell pet products. So what it does for you, you won't really get bored of the business you're running. At the end of the day, if due to these uh, difficult times, you want to create a, you know, a, a, a cash flow for you. You want to create a side hustle for you that potentially can turn into a main hustle. So it has to be interesting enough for you to d uh, dive deep into it. And then you can, you know, maybe you can choose a product or a niche by scratching your own itch, which means solving a personal problem of yours. Um, maybe it could be like skincare. If people struggle with acne, maybe you could find a product which helps them or something similar along those lines, right? And then you can research the competition. So uh, as you can see in this picture, it's a bit tiny, but these are the niche product ideas for 2019. So you have uh, power tools, uh, dog products, tech supplies, energy saving devices, um, oversized clothing, minimalistic uh, luggage, so many options that you have. And you would see that these are like small, like micro niche markets, right? Um, can I, can I get like a thumbs up or someone telling me in the chat if they can still hear me properly? Just want to make sure. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, great. Okay, and the third step is your website and your branding. So a lot of people ask me these questions that why would someone want to purchase from my website when they can literally do a quick Google search and see the same product on AliExpress for $3 as opposed to $30 on mine. It's all about branding. It's all about the way you position yourself in the market. So let's suppose someone sees your ad on Facebook or on Snapchat, LinkedIn, anywhere, and uh, they click on your website. The website should be captivating enough for them to choose it because they trust it more than just um, you know suppliers. Um, on AliExpress or any other website. Um, for me, I think my branding was uh, the title of like my URL, the Mad Alley. So it's like uh, the maddest alley in the world. And um, I try to I try to make it fun. And I have like a live chat uh, with an alley cat. So I try to uh, create a brand, right? And then I try to sell products which are eco friendly. So um, there's a bestseller on my website, which is the magnetic eyelashes for women. And I tried to find the product which is eco-friendly, which is cruelty free, not um, like no animal products or for anything used on them. And then I try to market the people who are uh, conscious about those things. Okay, so, and also about money back guarantee. So instead of, um, people, you know, having 30 days money back, you can have 60 days, 90 days. Um, you can offer a 50% discount on the second purchase if they make the first, uh, first purchase on your website. I mean, you have to think, brainstorm, brainstorm on what, when the person lands on your page, what you can get from them, like, and what they can get from you as well, right? Um, discount code or, or, or a beautiful template or a promise of like return and uh, anything. Okay, so step four is performing uh, competition research. Right, okay. So, just a moment, guys. Yeah, so perform your competition's research, right? Um, find your competition, first of all. Um, so for the Mad Alley, it's, it's, it's not general. It has a niche and there's so many, so many drop shippers who are selling beauty products all over the world. So it's difficult for me to position myself, but if I don't know what my competition is doing right, then I will not put in the right marketing strategies for myself and my products. So all the products that I have listed on my website, um, I've done the proper, proper market research for them. So find your competition and then look at their product pages and product listings. So when you land on their website, um, check the product page and see what they're highlighting, the features, um, the unique selling points, 
um, it could be the the cruelty free um, uh, a stamp or a money back stamp or the kind of payment methods that they are offering like credit card paypal apple pay um, do a quick research on how they're positioning them they're, they are positioning themselves when they are um, listing a product and that's super important because that you don't need to copy paste what they're doing but you're going to get a lot of ideas from them and then you can put in your own details on the product pages because the product page is the most important aspect of your website no one is going to land directly on your home page when you place an ad they're going to land on the product you're promoting so that has to be captivating and uh, i'll actually i'll send the link to my website right now and i'll answer your questions once we're done with the presentation just go through a product and see the way I have positioned it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is what I've done through research from like my competitors. And you also have to see what kind of ads they're running on mainly on Facebook. Uh, so there's a little trick to it. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with, maybe some of you are. Um, when you start going to these dropshipping websites, so when you select a product like a magnetic eyelash on Google, it's going to show you a lot of websites offering that product. Now, if you go to those websites, you're basically becoming a visitor. And if that website is running Facebook ads, they're going to retarget you with their ads. And then you're going to see their ads on your homepage on, of Facebook. But if you want to avoid that, if you don't want to span your timeline too much, then there's a feature on Facebook that if you go to a company page or a, a profile, a company profile, and if you go on the uh, right side, uh, in the middle, there's like an ads library. So you'll be able to see all of their ads, all of the ads that they're running for their business. So you're going to get ideas on uh, whether they're doing video ads or catalog ads, picture ads, if they're using emojis. Okay. And then you have to secure suppliers, step number five. So you could integrate Oberlu with Shopify and then you can select products. But before selecting a product, I would highly recommend you to actually do the research on the person uh, like behind that product, the person who's placing that product on AliExpress. Um, ideal for a beginner is AliExpress, but there are other dropshipping platforms like Sellhu and Doba, Doha, Doba, but I've never tried Doba, Doha. I've, I've tried um, Sellhu, but uh, why it's not beginner friendly is because it's, um, I don't think you can access it unless you purchase a subscription, which is an annual subscription. Um, and there's not a huge catalog of products um, as like compared to AliExpress. But the one good thing about salewho.com is that uh, the suppliers are from countries like US, UK, Australia, um, instead of just being in China, um, like AliExpress. So that's like a one pro, but for a beginner, I would 100% recommend AliExpress. So make sure the supplier drop ships. Um, it will be very easy to tell. You just have to click and chat with them and ask about their drop shipping fees um, uh, uh, and, and, and what they have to offer. So try to actually have conversations with more than two suppliers and see if they can speak with you and if they can converse with you, if they're even interested in drop shipping. Because there are some suppliers who are like thriving when it comes to drop shipping and they will focus on it but then there are some who are primarily working on alibaba and they're putting drop shipping as an option but they're not focusing um, on that aspect so try to have conversations with these aliexpress suppliers and step number six is you need to have a marketing plan for your business before starting ads before anything um, you need to analyze your current situation. So let's say that your strength is that, what makes you better than others? So for me, it could, I, I really like the name of my website and I like uh, the colors. I like that I try to offer eco-friendly products. So your quality website, right? 
And then your weaknesses would be that you're a beginner in a saturated market or a saturated category. Like for me, I'm, I'm, my, my weakness is that I'm in a saturated category, which is, which is beauty products. Um, and then what's your threat? So your threat is that you have a lot of competition. So this is why I chose beauty products. I have a lot of competition, but I like it that way because I learn from what my competition is doing. So identify your target audience. Now, marketing to the right people will reduce your marketing costs. So let's say if you're selling, um, okay, a little louder, please. Okay, I'm going to try it. So let's say that you're selling a baby product. Um, you're not going to sell a baby product to girls who are interested in beauty, right? You're going to sell a baby product to parents, um, parents who purchase often from Facebook or have like, have purchase behavior, who like to purchase online. Um, people um, from like an age group, a specific age group, or if you don't want to target the whole world because it's too broad, um, target specific countries like UAE, US, uh, Canada. And after you do research on the product that you want to market, you also have to see in which country that product is selling like hotcakes. So for me, the magnetic eyelash, um, they're selling, they were selling in 2018 really well in US. And then that changed in 2019. They started selling so well in Australia and Canada. So markets get saturated really quickly. Um, so you need to do like a quick research. And we talk about the tools on how to basically select your first product and see the competition per country, uh, per product, per a category in our course for e-commerce. Um, and it's like super specific in information. And honestly, for a beginner, it's, it's like eye opening. Um, it becomes fun. Like the process in the beginning is it's a bit tough, but um, thankfully we have Shopify and we can just buy a domain and we can start our website from the next day. Um, and have realistic marketing goals. So for example, you want five sales a day or you want to post five times on social media in two days or you want to post, um, or let's say you don't want to make sales, you want to get emails. So you can also run marketing campaigns on Facebook to get people's emails, and then you can use email marketing and send discounts to them. So you can create this small goals in your strategy to check them off the list. And then of course, uh, number four, set a marketing budget. Absolutely. Um, otherwise it's, it, you're, you'll be all over the place and um, it's not very, uh, a good scenario. <laughs> okay. And then have a customer acquisition strategy. Step number seven. So Facebook ads, influencer marketing, social media marketing, and email marketing. So for me, I never had to use, um, any except for the la last two because of my audience. So social media marketing and email marketing applies to me. And email marketing only applies once you have enough abandoned carts or enough maybe customers or potential customers in your email list. So let's say if, you're, if you give a pop-up or if a pop-up is too aggressive on your website, if you have a chat that says, uh, like get 10% off, so they will enter their name and their email address. You'll get their email address in your database and then you can market them with, with valuable information and 50% off, 30% off, um, like that. So email marketing is absolutely crucial for this strategy to work because you might not make profit from the ads on Facebook, but you will definitely make profit when the people purchase again and again and again on your website. So that is where my profit comes from. And then we have covered the seven step method, right? Um, it's, it's simple. The marketing aspect and the strategy aspects of this, it's a little tricky, but with, that's why we help you cover it in our course. Um, and then let's talk about the license, right? Let's get down to business. So do you need a trade license for drop shipping? So with a license, you can accept credit card payments. So you have Apple Pay, you have um, MasterCard, you have all options. Um, and if you want to target markets like UAE, people don't pay from, you know, like PayPal. 
um, so it's, it's good to have a trade license, right? Because you're not losing money when you're advertising. And then you can sign agreements with logistic companies like um, Aramex. So if you want to go on a cash on delivery route, so let's say you choose UAE as your country for drop shipping. So instead of drop shipping, you can also do cash on delivery for UAE um, because a lot of people here like to pay um, up, like uh, at the door. So there is uh, so like in UAE GCC. So that's like a very good um, pro, right? And then without a license. So there are options without a license. You can accept PayPal payments, um, $3,000 withdrawals a month. So they like, even if you're getting, I think $5,000 in your account, you can only take $3,000 from your account in one month. Um, so for me, for my business, the Mad Ali, what I did was that I have a PayPal account, right? And then I have a friend from Canada I asked her to add her details in my Shopify platform. And so she receives all of the customer like payments, even if there's a refund or a chargeback, she deals with it. And then I pay her like a, like a monthly fee, right? Like a, like $500 or so. And so it's easy for me. I don't, I don't need a license. I have a friend from Canada. Uh, so if you have an arrangement like that, that's even better. Um, and I, I, and I, you can use it. You can, you, if you don't have like a relative, if you have maybe a friend and you feel like they won't do, they won't accept payments. If there's something like in it for them, maybe a commission, then go for it when your business uh, starts to pick up. And then you can sell on other platforms. Um, Amazon FBA. And then you have niche websites like Etsy.com and Teesprings. Um, and then we offer Astrolabs. We offer company set up in the UAE. Um, Astrolab Dubai offers Dubai-based company registration, subsidized company licensing, a fast-track bank setup, whitelisted for easy bank account setup in Dubai, and a beautiful 24-7 co-working space. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to join Astrolabs because I wanted to work in their co-working spaces. And uh, it, it, it was always a goal of mine to come here because of what they offer um, for the people um, in digital marketing um, and the tech communities. So learn more at astrolabs.com. Dubai, like I'll, 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 don't worry about this. I'll send you the slides, uh, the presentation and the recording of this webinar. Um, maybe today by evening, I'll try 5 p.m. Um, to all of you. And one more thing, I'll try to answer the questions now. If you have any question, any more questions, detailed questions, please shoot me an email at alina at astrolabs.com. I'm happy to help. I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Okay, um, let's go for questions right now, right? Um, okay. How do you identify the right target group? So you need to have the right business goals to identify that target group. So um, as I said, if I'm choosing to launch a baby store with baby products, I have to identify the target group for it, which is parents. Um, uh, and the age group should be, could be maybe uh, like above 23 till... 55 and then target groups so what kind of um websites they like so i don't know a lot of baby websites so maybe like mom's world or just kidding um which websites they buy strollers from and uh, like when you open facebook's interface or any other social media marketing's interface they will give you the options and if you do a quick uh, google search on your niche it's going to help you identify the right target group for your niche uh, do you use Clavio for email campaigns and do you also do SMS? Okay, so I've used Clavio. Um, I think Shopify always recommends Clavio to me. Um, so I, I use Clavio uh, definitely and I use another email marketing uh, plugin that um, I mentioned in my um, e like e-commerce store, there are multiple options. So I use one for abandoned cart and the other for sending e like um, generic email marketing campaigns like MailChimp. Um, do, you, do you need to have a license in Canada or a personal bank account? Okay, so for a license in Canada, you don't need to have it unless you exceed like, I think 100K in a year annually, if I'm not wrong about the numbers. And um, you just need a personal bank account. So for my friend, uh, Sahar, she just had a personal bank account 
and she just entered her details um, on Shopify and then she started receiving orders. And um, she never had to like uh, pay any fees. I think there were some small tax fees after six months or so, but they were so tiny that it completely slipped off of my mind. So Canada was like the, Canada was like the best country for me to start this in. And in US, I think it will be a completely different ballgame. Okay, so for trade license, do we require to rent a physical shop or warehouse to show to the authorities? Not at all. Um, Astrolab simplifies all of the process for you. And um, as it's a dropshipping business, you don't need to prove anything that you have a physical shop or a warehouse. Um, you just need to have an e-commerce license. So by e-commerce, they know automatically that there are different like models of businesses. Is dropshipping the only way? Not at all. There are so many options in e-commerce that you can um, like dive into. You have cash on delivery, um, you have uh, drop servicing, you have selling your own services. Uh, if you're a graphic designer, you can sell your designs on your website or you can sell, you can make a product. Like I can record this course literally and I can sell it. I, I can create a website and I can sell it. So there's so many options for you to do it. Um, you just need to find what you're passionate about um, for me, I've been passionate about drop shipping, but now I'm becoming more passionate about um, coaching and courses. Um, so yeah, I, I will try to explore that market as well. Do you have a list of approved trusted suppliers or does Oberlu provide that? Um, I do have a list of like approved suppliers from AliExpress. Um, and Oberlu also recommends suppliers, but I don't really, because since it's automated, I don't really go with Oberlu's suggestion. I want to test it out myself. I want to test the suppliers myself. How do you integrate the images and the description? Okay, so literally you don't need to do anything. You just need to import a product. You click a button uh, on AliExpress when you choose a product and the product gets imported on your Oberlu dashboard. And you just click another button and you click it. It says import to your website on your Shopify dashboard. And then um, AliExpress has all of the images of the product and the descriptions, but their descriptions are so lengthy and nonsensical. I, you always have to change them because I, English is not their first language and, and they're not looking to market the product. They're just placing it. Um, so they, they, the, the headlines are so long, like uh, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. So yes, you have to change the description. Um, you just have to edit products on Shopify and I'll help you go through all of that um, in our course. Um, but uh, change the description, you can change the images. Um, if you want cleaner images, you can use a little bit of Photoshop to remove like uh, the background behind them. So there are like quick tricks to do that, right? Which app do you use for upsells? Okay, so uh, I think uh, it's called Zooks. I, I forgot what it's called. Let me do a quick search, guys. Because um, uh, Okay, how about I send you the suggestion uh, on my email for which app I use for my product up sales because I test so many apps that it's completely, I, I've never used Zipify. Um, okay, can we get visa on Astrolabs? Absolutely, five visas per company, if I'm not completely wrong. Um, I'll share with you guys the concerned person to find out all of your trade license um, questions for Astrolabs to start your e-commerce business. Uh, Cairo at astrolabs.com. And please guys, once again, if you have any questions, hit me an email. I don't mind answering them. Um, can you share the list of suppliers that you have? I'll share it. Um, you will just have to send me a reminder, Rahil, uh, because it's quite a lengthy process. I don't have a list of them. Like, I have them, but I haven't created an Excel sheet for them, which is a good point. I should. Um, you buy items in bulk from Alipay, don't we? No, no, no. This is drop shipping, so you don't have to buy anything unless someone purchases on your website. So that's like the best part about drop shipping. Do you pay your supplier first or receive your customer's payment? So 
customer's payment. So once uh, the customer sees my ad, let's say, or my tweet on Factionary, um, they will place an order. And once I see that the order has been placed, maybe in emails on my Shopify or my Shopify uh, dashboard, then I place an order on AliExpress. So it's basically a no risk kind of a business for me, right? Um, the only risk is the marketing and the marketing you can nail by having the right target audiences. Can we receive the slides along with the recording? Absolutely. I'll, I'll do that today by evening. How about return of products? Okay, this is a good question because I need to answer it to you guys. Um, so the basic rule is that you try to avoid people returning the product. So let's say a customer complains about a product that they received from me, um, from me, and um, they, they want to return it. So I avoid it uh, and I tell them that, okay, let me send you another piece and let me give you a 50% off for your second purchase. So that's kind of easing the process for them. They don't have to go through the hassle of returning the product because if they return the product, they'll be finding out that it's a drop shipping product. So you try to, you really try to avoid returns and it's good for, it's, it's a win-win scenario. It's um, no hassle for you and no hassle for the customer. So you just send them another piece. Most likely you're still going to profit off of that customer because if, you, if they're buying it for $30 and the product costs you $3, it's going to cost you another $3, uh, $3 $6, and you're still going to not go in a loss to send another piece. Do you, brand, uh, uh, do you have your brand label on parcel or supplier? Yes, absolutely. So that's, the, that's why I try to have conversations with my supplier. It's not an automatic process. Um, you can send packages without your branding. That's absolutely fine. It's drop shipping, so they won't reveal who they are. But if you want your own logo and if you want it to look like an actual company, um, then I suggest speaking to your supplier about this. And I think they give you like a cost for it. So like three cents or something. Um, what is the average side hustle a person can make as a beginner? I mean, it, it, it really depends. It depends. Um, and let's not forget that you have to consider the marketing costs of any business. Um, for me, it's different because I have an audience, but uh, if you want to build an audience organically and wait a little bit um, and start marketing, it could give you like a lot of profit. But I would suggest not listen to the gurus online, which say like uh, make a hundred K in three days. I mean, it's, it can happen, but it's just people trying to sell their own courses. And uh, you just have to look at it realistically and create marketing goals yourself and try to achieve them. So what's a reasonable shipping period? Um, 30 days, yeah. I mean, uh, AliExpress offers e-packets for people in a lot of countries and people get their products by 12 days to 20 days. But uh, on my website, I try to mention that um, there may be a delay in the, in the time you'll receive your product because it's high in demand or uh, due to an, any situation, because that's one downside of using AliExpress as your supplier, um, is going to take time for them to deliver the product, like not too long. And if you want to test it, just buy the product yourself. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to cost you a couple dollars. So if you want to see their process and see what kind of branding, what kind of package it will look like with your logo, then I suggest buy it. Uh, did you increase your prices because shipping costs increased? Uh, not at all. No, no, no. Um, but like I have a message on my website that uh, due to COVID-19, we have free shipping for all orders. But I anyway had free shipping for all orders. But I just want to remind them I'm not going to charge them shipping. Um, because when people see shipping costs, they just get turned off and they don't want to uh, purchase from your website. I think like that's like the psychology. But let's say if a product costs them ten dollars and the shipping is four dollars maybe they'll think about it but if the product costs them fifteen dollars and ninety dollars with free shipping i get more orders than uh with that scenario um okay guys um thank you for the webinar 
uh, thank you for coming here. We've had 53 participants, I'm so happy. And please shoot me an email at alina.astrolabs.com if you have any questions. Thank you so much and have an amazing quarantine, unfortunately. Thank you guys, bye-bye, bye-bye.